This video is sponsored by Ren, more on that later. If you have a pulse, you probably know who Mr. Beast is. He is perhaps the single biggest content creator in the history of the internet, and thus is a constant source of conversation and debate. And one of Jimmy's most recent uploads was no exception, where he pays for surgery that restored the eyesight of a thousand blind people. And that video has sparked a ton of opinions that really get you thinking, but mostly ones that make you want to embrace your inner passive aggressive southern lady and go, oh bless your heart. So I want to navigate the discourse that's been surrounding this video, as well as my take on why this video ultimately is a net positive on the world. Though, I feel like it should be obvious, but apparently it's not. And almost every video that Jimmy puts out seems to result in controversy to some degree, despite being usually unwarranted in my opinion. I mean, one huge example was a video where someone earned money for each day they stayed in a room. Mr. Beast cost flack for putting someone in solitary confinement, which wasn't at all the case. And this actually resulted in the video's participant taking to TikTok in order to defend Jimmy. I'm actually the contestant from that video, and I can assure you that they had people watching over me. And this kind of thing happens a lot, where Jimmy catches criticism either for things that aren't true, or for things that people just don't like about him, but word as being objectively bad. And I really don't think this video is any different. First though, I need to make a few jokes. This is the thumbnail. Tell me with a straight face that that isn't funny. I'm not saying offensive or immoral, I'm talking just good old fashioned goofy. The boy fake crying, the tears being thicker than syrup, the head bandage, the fact that he's not appearing to cry tears of joy just tears. The fact that Jimmy's like the devil on his shoulder, like, Yes, Timmy, I have restored your sight, but it always comes with a price. Like, if we take this thumbnail literally, this boy just had his eyesight restored, and the first thing he sees is Jimmy running in for a photo op. Like, Jimmy didn't even close the door behind him. I'm pretty sure this boy is still on the operating table. I'm obviously kidding. It's fake. Who cares? I just really like to imagine this as a real photo being taken. Anyway, the video itself is exactly what you think it is. There's no clown on a unicycle that really throws a wrench into everything. A thousand people couldn't see, but now they can. Though I do want to point out one little excerpt that I just found funny. Most of us see the world like this. No, Jimmy, my world does not look like cinematic shots of Antarctica and private islands. I don't have enough money and I'm not allowed to leave this desk. That's obviously not how he meant it. I just love the implication that most people can both fly and also just be very rich. But here's the thing, 200 million people see the world like this. I feel like a bad person because I thought he was gonna cut to a black screen for a minute, which would have been really funny and really inappropriate. So I'm really glad he didn't go in that direction. But all jokes aside, the video's great. Jimmy specifically takes multiple opportunities to talk about the fact that half of the population with curable blindness can't afford to cure it simply because of money. They can't see, but we have all the technology to fix it. Yep, half of all the blindness in the world is people who need a 10 minute surgery. Crazy. Yeah. He even provides a link to allow the nearly 100 million people that have viewed this video to donate to the cause themselves. And honestly, I think it's great. I don't have anything negative to say in the video and am kind of surprised to see it be as controversial as it is. But nonetheless, it is. So let's look at some of the interesting responses to this video after I tell you about another interesting response to a problem in the world. That was a really bad segue, but it's okay because this video is sponsored by Ren. Look, we're all tired of feeling like there's nothing we can do about the climate crisis, and that is where Ren comes in. Ren helps you calculate your carbon footprint, but instead of just making you feel bad about it, they actually provide you with ideas on how to reduce it, but that's not all. Ren also lets you donate to help fund projects that seek to reduce the carbon found in our atmosphere, such as rainforest preservation and planting trees. This helps you offset your carbon footprint since you can't ever reduce it to zero. And if you watch this channel, you're probably a little cynical and are wondering how you you know that your money is being used properly. That's why Ren sends you monthly updates on the projects that your donations are funding. Just one example of the good Ren is doing is their efforts to reduce wildfires in California by clearing out the most flammable debris in their forests, which saves lives and reduces carbon. I personally reduce my carbon footprint by walking and taking public transportation when possible, so it's great to see an accessible option to take that even further. And as a special bonus, the first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. In a world filled with confusion and big words, Ren is a simple and effective way to make a difference in the climate crisis. Thanks to Ren for helping keep the lights on, now back to the video. And for a lot of this, I'll be pulling from an article from BuzzFeed News. You know, the good part of BuzzFeed? At least so I thought, but after reading this article, I'm not so sure about that. First off is that this video could be seen as exploitative of people with disabilities. And while I do think that word could be applied to a few of Jimmy's videos, 
I definitely don't think it does here. It's not like a game where people have to perform like monkeys in exchange for a chance to win money they might desperately need. Because I agree that can get a little weird. These are people who received a guaranteed treatment in a video that raised awareness of this issue. So I fail to see a negative to this. Especially because Jimmy actually mentioned that this procedure had a chance of failing in some patients. Because Jeremiah was born with cataracts, his right eye never received light. And that means that this surgery only has a 50% chance of working. And I'm gonna assume that out of a thousand procedures, there were probably some that were unsuccessful. And notice I said assume because those weren't featured in the video. I think if Jimmy featured someone that was excited to restore their eyesight only to have the procedure fail and Jimmy monetize their suffering, then yeah, this video would probably cross so many lines that Jimmy would have his own chalk just to draw more lines so he could cross them but that didn't happen. So I don't see how this could be argued as exploitation, especially since Jimmy can only afford to do something this good thanks to the fact that he makes these videos. Though this also reignited the conversation about if good deeds done on camera make you a good person or not. And I'm gonna echo Charlie a bit here because I do think he had the best take on this, which is, who cares? If a good thing is done by a potentially bad person, then it was still a good thing done. So telling that person to not do good things because they might be bad as a person, is lame and confusing now that I said that out loud, but you can decide whether or not you like the person, but telling them not to do good things because of that is lame. Also, Jimmy does a ton of philanthropy behind the scenes that don't always get turned into videos. And on that note, I've seen people argue that Jimmy should just give away all of his money now as opposed to when he passes. But as a guy who did poorly in economics, let me say this. Let's say Jimmy has $10 million to his name. That's definitely low, but I want a nice round number here, so... Anyway, he could give that 10 million away now or give away 50 in a decade thanks to the business that was generated from that 10, a business that is primarily built on giving in the first place. Like, I feel like people are oversimplifying this way too much in order to paint him as a villain. This just feels like a reach. Another complaint is the role of the system in all of this. And Hassan had a pretty good take on this. And I'm filled with rage. That, What's like, wrong? You. That we shut off access to a 10 minute procedure because we paywalled it and decided that like some people just simply can't get it. See, if you notice, Hassan specifically said that he's angry that Mr. Beast has the opportunity to make the video. Not that he specifically did. Which is fair. Even Jimmy himself has expressed a similar sentiment. And I think there are people that are conflating those two things into one thing and making it Mr. Beast's fault that he could make the video. Take this tweet. It's the never-ending cycle of content creation that makes Mr. Beast feel insidious. The underlying notion that if the camera wasn't on to feed the machine, nothing would happen. The dystopian thought we're all reliant on YouTube views instead of competent government for assistance. The thing is, that's not Jimmy's fault. He's not insidious for realizing he can make a living out of giving. And if you argue that his influence should be used to advocate for changing the system, that's what he's doing. A video of him showing how it can be done is going to reach far more people than him just telling us about it. Not to mention, a lot of people look up to Mr. Beast, so this could inspire them to be more generous. I don't know, I think it's a weak criticism. Then the article brings up stuff from six years ago and other unrelated things, and if this is supposed to be reporting on this specific controversy, then I don't see why it's relevant. Like the author just says, here are some bad things that a 24 year old has done when he was a teenager. I'm not using that to build to a point. I just want you to agree with me. So I'm going to make you upset. Unless you're talking about Jimmy's overall character, which this article isn't. And to be honest, even if you are, it just feels like a cheap shot to me. Like even I didn't bring that stuff up in my video essay about Jimmy. But that's not the worst part of this article because what follows is one of those things that I can't respond to in any way other than saying, Oh, bless your heart. Another huge problem. Mr. Beast's video seems to regard disability as something that needs to be solved. One, no. I am six foot two and am jealous of your ability to reach. Two, no. At worst, Jimmy is saying that people should be able to have the choice to not live with a curable disability instead of being forced to live with it due to a lack of money. And don't take my word for it, take his. I can't see how you can argue that it's bad when the individual consents. Like in the vast majority of cases, if you're getting outraged on behalf of someone else who's happy about what happened to them, you're probably wrong. And that's a very common occurrence with Jimmy. And it's okay to be wrong, but you should probably realize that at some point, you know? Three, no. I once lost the ability to walk for a few days. Gotta tell you, I prefer walking. That's why it's called a disability. You are missing the ability to do something which is probably bad. Unless you are Matt Murdock, 
being able to see is objectively better than not. And I know I'm right because it will be impossible to refute what I'm saying without saying that I said something that I didn't say the same way that this quote did about Jimmy's video. So there's that. In fact, the only blind person that this article actually cites says that Jimmy is putting his money where his mouth is and isn't exploiting the disability since he's highlighting the good of their stories instead of the struggle. Kind of like I said before. And the only example I can find of a participant actually speaking out on this is them saying that they had every reason to believe that Mr. Beast was being genuine with his intentions. It's almost like, you know, a thousand real people in the world right now are able to see because of him. I don't see how you can complain about that. And Mr. Beast's response to this was pretty much what you'd imagine. Amusement bordering on frustration. He doesn't understand why he's getting heat for doing the thing that literally everyone says they want people with money to do. Do, which I actually think is fair. Like most influencers who amass great wealth keep most of it. I mean, as dumb as it was, you had the whole Hassan lives in a mansion controversy a bit back because yeah, like most people, Hassan keeps a huge portion of his wealth. Wealth that ironically comes largely from React content, but we're not going into the ethics of that right now. But with Mr. Beast, most of his money seems to go back into his company that creates jobs and his philanthropy. I mean, last I heard, Jimmy lives in a studio located in his warehouse. He doesn't even live in a mansion despite being able to afford one. And even if you think that Jimmy doing good deeds is all an act for his own gain, who cares? I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think Mr. Beast is unquestionably a net positive on the world. As long as that's the case, I don't think the pitchforks need to be kept constantly sharpened. And that's not to say he's perfect. Hell, even I've criticized some of his choices that I felt are questionable. For the record though, I do really like Mr. Beast. I feel like some people got the opposite impression. Like on the whole, I do think he's pretty great, but I can also acknowledge that a lot of the places where I felt like Jimmy could improve, he has been. And I'm worried that by not recognizing and acknowledging where there has been growth, people are creating a situation that when and if Jimmy does take things too far, he's going to be less inclined to listen since a significant portion of the criticism against him is confusing not liking him with him being wrong in some way. And guess what? You can not like him. You can be uncomfortable with this video. That's fine, and I would never tell you otherwise. But I think it's important to distinguish between one's opinion on something and the overall quality of that thing. For example, example, if you like this video, that doesn't automatically make it a good video, though it does help it reach more people, so you should still do that if you want to, please. Thank you. I hate asking, but... I think the best take on the situation is that it would be amazing to live in a society that puts Mr. Beast out of business, but if that's not gonna happen, let's just take the win and save the pearl clutching for when Jimmy teams up with Elon Musk to build the Death Star. I'm obviously kidding, but you can't tell me with complete confidence that that can't happen if Jimmy undergoes a villain arc. You can't. Which is why I'm so glad I've never criticized Jimmy or Elon. No, never. I am so glad and I can't wait for them to be our overlords. Look, say what you want, but sometimes kissing up is a good idea.